Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today I have a special treat for you, a trans channel. A transformative channel is a unique style that I do where I share energy space with the spirit from the afterlife. Now I only do it when the spiritual energy is compatible for me, when it feels comfortable. I've been practicing this practice of trans channeling for over a year now, so I've gotten quite comfortable with it. And I have a very special spirit guide in the afterlife who you may know yourself as well. That is Prince in the afterlife who helps me to connect and bring, he's kind of like my bouncer, yeah kind of like a bouncer, my security guard, if you will, in the afterlife. He, his energy I am most familiar with, and he and I have been working on this practice of transformative channeling for, for quite some time, and so I'm really comfortable with his energy around me, and so I trust it. Why Prince? Well, you need to check out the playlist about all of my Prince channels if you're interested in understanding the backstory of that. I'm actually a Minnesotan born and raised, and so the energy of Prince on the afterlife is just something that's natural, normal, I guess, for me. All right, so let's get started. Today, the transformative channel is with David Bowie. Now, I have spoken to uh, Mr. Bowie previously, and you can look that up. There's a playlist for David Bowie if you're interested. And how this came about was I actually felt a connection between Prince and David Bowie recently. A couple of weeks ago, I actually had an in-person retreat that I hosted here in Minnesota. And during that retreat, we were doing our discussion and our wrap up and David Bowie actually popped right in and chatted a little bit, had a few things to share. And so I felt his energy again today, this morning, right when I woke up. In fact, when I put this cool shirt on, everyone is someone. Um, I felt his energy and thought I should trans channel him today. And today is the day that I like to do trans channels. So I thought, yeah, I'll do that. So here we are. Um, you will hear my husband's voice in the background. He is going to ask questions during the trans, ch trans channel time. Um, most of the time I will keep my eyes closed and allow the energy of the spirit to come in and share the space. Let's get started. All right. Oh, and I wore this for Mr. Bowie, this funky uh, leather, pink leather jacket. I thought he'd think it was cool and appreciate it. He's got kind of this great artisty vibe, and uh, I really like that about him, and he's super polite. He's so polite to me um, when we were chatting earlier, so we'll see how this goes. All right. Okay, so let's share space. All right. See if Prince will help do this, the connection. Oh, I'm so ready to trans channel. I haven't done it in a while. I don't know how the accent is going to sound. He doesn't have to use an accent, but I like to be authentic. So if I can allow him to speak the way he sounded, that would be helpful. But I can't promise you all stuff because I have no idea. I am such a non-linguistic type. So we'll see. <laughs> He's laughing at me. He's like, oh. We'll give it a try, he said. Okay, oh, I can feel Bowie right away. So I'm gonna say I can feel Prince to my left and I can see Bowie in the front right next to him. He's ready to kind of jump in. He's got a red sports coat on and red pants. It looks like in a white shirt. He kind of has a ruffle on it and he's gonna come in. I think he's gonna jump in right away, we'll see.
That was fast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Prince told me it was all right for me to just jump. He said, jump in. He said, I said, now? He said, yeah, now, right now. <sighs> She's quite thin. It's quite thin. I can feel it in the, the shoulders, across the shoulder blades. And it does feel quite comfortable. You're welcome, darling. <laughs> I think she expects me to be different than I am. There's a lot of activity in her uh, belly, in her tummy. <laughs> There's a... Uh, she calls them the chakras. She, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, to use her her terminology, her language, and it's uh, it's different than my own uh, a bit. But uh, I would first like to say thank you for inviting me and allowing me to come into your space. I I recognize that that's quite a, an honor, and, and I appreciate that very much. So thank you for that. There is significance to the day. We're nearing a time that is quite special. And so with that, it's part of the, the push and the why now. So that answers that question, I believe. I understand that you have questions for me as well. and You may, you may go ahead and, and ask them if you'd like to do that. The first question I'm going to ask is, what were your sources of inspiration for your music? Or anything else, for that matter? Yes, uh, inspiration comes from everywhere, doesn't it? You know, a lot, a lot of musicians, I feel, we are storytellers. We share stories, and it can be something so simple. And you just take that little piece and it, it, can, it can sort of take on a life of its own and create just an incredible experience for the listener and mix that up with some great sound and the instruments and the, the harmonies. When they come together, it really brings, it brings it to life. It just breathes life into something that maybe was just an experience that was so simple. And, you know, I think that there's a, a myth, a misunderstanding of or misinterpretation for many fans and many who listen to music. There is a lot to inject of your own and to recognize your own personal and unique experiences in the music. And for me, that's a very special thing to know that the individual listener can take whatever they, they may be feeling at the time and it creates a, a link or an understanding. I think I see, I feel, I feel that, I feel the, there is a lot of effort that is made in understanding what the artist created, what the artist wanted, what the musician was sharing through the lyrics. And, and if you just focus on the words, you miss out, you miss out on the entirety of the, the gift of that connection of the music. You really do miss out. It's really about taking something that, that I or, or anyone else created and bringing it into your life in that moment and connecting with it. That's why music is so very special. And it, and it tells a story and you connect and you, you feel like you, you were right there because part of your life, part of your story mixes with that. And, and it's more than just the words. It's more than just the words. It's all these things, all these, these points coming together in one moment when you hear the song. 
which is why I think music is transcendent. It does stand the test of time. It, it completely provides you with an incredible amount of opportunity for personal growth and expansion. And that, I feel, is one of the most powerful things about music. And if you ask any artist, they will, and they will no doubt say something similar to that. That's a good question. Very good question. You know, the other question is related to that. It, and maybe you've answered part of it already. Um, but we want to know what, what was your creative process over and above what you've just talked about. I did like to get into character, you might say. Now, my early on works uh, might seem somewhat of a kaleidoscope of experience, and you could interpret that in any way that you choose to interpret it, but it's really a process of experimentation, you know, trying different things and, and being in different places. I was very much inspired by what was going on around me in the world, and it could be the architecture of a great club, or even, even the influence of another artist's album cover, or street art, or there, there's just any number of things that could inspire me, or inspire anyone, for that matter, to, to create something really special. But I do want to speak to the decades. You could, but it makes me sound old, <laughs> take... <laughs> take the decades and break them up into different uh, stages, so-called stages of life or stages of, of my career. And it's really not fair to look at any one point of a person's life and, and make a judgment about the whole. And yet, because it, it is really art, every album, every production, because my concerts, my concerts were experiences. They were productions. Many of you will really understand that. And as a performer, the goal is to really bring forward things that will expand you, that will make you think differently, make you become something more than what you think you can be. be. And to challenge you a little bit and to challenge the norms and the status quos, I think might right be what I will be remembered for. And if that is what I am remembered for, then that is a very good thing. That is something that a person could look back upon their life and be proud of. And yet there was some weird stuff out there. Can I swear? I'm not sure if I can swear, but uh, I might just do that, actually, if I was speaking with Bridget herself. But uh, there was some weird stuff that I did, but it all is part of the whole. You can't make any part of yourself bad, or if you reject some part of your life experience, then you're not, then you're not whole. You've got to accept all of that, and, and maybe that's where you get inspiration from. It's not so much inspiration, but it's healing. It really, she, yes, she would love that. It is a healing uh, expression or experience, a healing experience, and the process of that is shared public. And then it gives other people the opportunity to, to share that, to get some of that too. You know, good or bad, however you would judge it. It's not to be judged, it's to simply be interpreted. Like, like art, it really is art. And I appreciate it when... We are referred to, musicians and performers are referred to as artists. I really appreciate that. I, I, I respect many other, other musicians' works, and I can really appreciate a great performance. Great performance. Hmm. What were you put on earth here to learn and or to teach people? Yes, <laughs> she will love this. You know, I never thought of myself as someone that had some big mission or 
to be someone that others could look up to. That was never my intent. I never set out to accomplish that or to do that. I simply gave myself that permission to be myself in that moment, however I was feeling, whatever raw reality I was faced with. And in fact, your Lady Gaga, she does this. And I would say that I am quite interested. I'm quite interested in that. To allow yourself to be creative and to try different things, to experience and experiment to not be afraid to rebirth yourself. The term reinvention is too blasé. It's too, it's not, it's not reflective of what, what I mean. Rebirth yourself over and over and over again. Other people will judge you, but if you get stuck in that, you can't come, you can't come out of it easily. You cannot... Put yourself in a position where other people, their opinions are, their views of you are more important than your own. You, you've got to really allow yourself that permission to experience. And when you experience, sometimes you fail. Sometimes you fall. Sometimes you really screw it up. And that's just a part. That's a part of the process. That's part of the life. That's part of the experience. So uh, if I was here to teach people things, as, as, as a member of the Afterlife Club, I would say that looking now, understanding now where I'm at now, which is the afterlife, yes, I am dead, and I am spirit fully and completely, from this view, I would say, most certainly to be yourself. And to allow yourself to, feel, to, to give yourself, cut yourself some, some room, make yourself some room to experience what that might be. Because you, don't, you aren't born knowing who you are. You discover who you are because you're born from, into a body from a spirit seed, from this ball of incredible universe. And you are born into a human experience. And you've got to discover and give yourself room. Give yourself time. Give yourself that, that, those opportunities to experience who you are, to get to know who you are as that whole universe that you are. And time is short. You don't have a lot of time to be screwing around with things that don't really matter to you. And other people are not, you are living your, who are you living your life for? That's a big question. That's what I would pose. And maybe that's what the purpose of my life was. Who are you living your life for? You know, it's sort of odd. She's behind and she's, uh, she can't quite speak forward. I can't quite hear her. Prince said that she will talk behind, but she's giving me signals. <laughs> oh, she is. It's quite funny, rather. It's rather funny. One more question. <laughs> it's like I'm being directed. Producers backstage. <laughs> I'm sure you're used to that. Right, mate. <laughs> what, um, it's going to be sound a little weird. What occupies your time now? What are you involved with in the afterlife? And are there any plans to reincarnate? What makes you think I'm not already here? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just uh, joking with you. No, I, I'm not back yet. I have some things to do here. 
I have some things I want to experience. As a full spirit, there's so many things that are limitless, truly, infinite. It's a lot of fun to not have a body. Now, I recognize that my body was suffering in my last months, but I do not feel any pain and I don't feel any regret. There's a bit of remorse, remorsefulness, if you want to call it that, for not realizing how precious life is. It, it really is. It's such a, sh it's like a blink of an eye. And it's really an incredible gift to be a person, to have that human existence. And yes, I, I want to come back. Oh, yes, I want to come back. It's too early for me right now. It's too soon. There are many things. There are people that are still grieving deeply for me. And I would like to um, give myself the opportunity to do what I can from this angle <laughs> to help them, if I may, and assist them. Uh, you would call it a spirit guide or spirit guidance, perhaps. So I'm, I'm serving, you might say I'm in service in that capacity. So that, those are my short-term plans, you might say. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say when exactly I might come back, but I, I will. I would really like to. I, yes, definitely. I most certainly would like to. All right. I think that's that. I think I'm getting the cut from behind. You're right. She really does. She is kind of bossy, I will say. She's a bit bossy. But, but I'm okay with that. I like strong women. I think Prince might agree with that. And he's like, he's shaking his head like, oh, no, no, don't bring me into that. I don't want to be part of that conversation, he says. <laughs> and we do get along quite well in the afterlife, if, if you're curious about that. Quite well, yes. Many of us are connected, most certainly. We have similar paths, you know. We have similar missions now. And we're helping a lot of people. And it's, it's good to do that in community. So... Thank you. Thank you for, for making a go of it. And you didn't use the accent. I told her she didn't need to, so we'll see how she feels about the, how this went, right? Yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. And to my fans, thank you. Thank you. I feel your love and I appreciate very, very much. Thank you. I feel, I feel your love. And, and I, a lot, I have a lot of gratitude. A lot of love back. Thank you. It's just infinite love, my friends. It's infinite love. Yeah. Yeah, her body's pretty comfortable to me. It's fine. It's not awkward at all. She's pushing me out though. How quickly I drive it. I'm okay. It's Bridget. I'm close. I'm almost all the way here, but I... His nice energy. His energy is very... It's quite nice. It is. It's not... Um... Let's see if I can kind of get back in my body a little bit. I don't know if I can open my eyes. The lights are so bright. <laughs> I didn't hear an accent, and I told him I would try to do an accent if needed, but I, I couldn't. It was really nice. He didn't, like, push it.
you know? I thought that was very kind. I would, I mean, I love Brits and I love that English accent, but I don't know if I could, in my linguistic range, I don't know if I could do that. I don't even know. We're gonna have to do an after. Let's do an after video, a post transformative channel video um, and talk about this experience. Let's do that, I'd like to do that. So you've been watching a transformative channel with David Bowie. I'm Bridget. I'm here at Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit. I hope you enjoy the new weekly channeling videos. Be sure to like this video. If you do, comment. If you have other questions or things you'd like to hear me just have a discussion with David about, and maybe I'll do that in a future, in a future video. So remember, the purpose here for all of us, the purpose of life is to live it. The purpose of your life is to live it. Live it. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching.